We are here with Violet Benson. We're going to be doing a spotlight on. It's going to be amazing. Make sure you tune in. You're tuning in to the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Oh, yeah. We are here with the meme queen herself, the voice for everything women think about but rarely talk about, the woman behind the 3.2 million follower Instagram daddy issues underscore, Violet underscore. Benson, everybody. <laughs> applause, applause. Thank you. Oh, you guys don't <laughs> have to stand up for me. Stop. Oh, you know. <laughs> you know, we, we do it, we do it. <laughs> Yep, that's how we do it here at AfterBuzz TV. Yeah. <laughs> she's got her popcorn, her Diet Coke, she's got her water, she's all settled in. My phone, her just phone, in case. Her phone, just in case. Yeah. And this is going to be a fun experience. To get to talk to somebody that we all feel like we already know, anybody that follows Daddy Issues underscore, uh, feels like they, they know you, I would think. Do you get that a lot when you're, when you're, in the, when you're working the streets, when you're in the streets? Um, yeah, I actually get that all the time. When I, especially if I, like just yesterday, I went to the supermarket yeah. and this guy was on the phone with his mom and he was like, wait, mom, mom, sh sh shut up. Let me call you back. And he's like, oh my God, are you Violet Benson? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I follow you on Snapchat. And then, and then we just get into conversation. That's also because I'm super friendly, so I can't help it. And I'll, I'll just talk to somebody as if they're my friend. And that's usually how it happens. Or like if I go out at night and stuff like that, I just run into people. And it's literally like, I feel like you're my best friend. Like I feel like I've known you for so long. Right. And I think it's because I share like personal things and I really talk about what everyone else wants to talk about. Yeah, that's the first thing I noticed about you is, you know, I, I do notice when people are friendly because it is kind of a rare thing, unfortunately, and you were so friendly to begin with. And, you know, a lot of times I'm sure you have to do the same thing where you have to kind of make people feel comfortable and get them out of their shell because people just aren't friendly to begin with. You have to kind of make them feel comfortable enough to be friendly. So for me to meet somebody that's just friendly, I'm like, okay. Yay. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's but that's so cool. And I mean, at this point, being so successful and having so many followers, uh, you must get a lot of requests from people all day long. I mean, I know that I get some people saying, can you follow me on Snapchat? Hello, why didn't you respond to me? And I feel like, oh, my God. Huh. And, like, you are on another level. How do you... How do you answer every? Do you, are you able to answer everybody and well, communicate with them? It's, it's I do difficult. try to answer everyone. Um, like if they DM me, I'll do my best to answer everyone. But sometimes I get so many messages in one day that in the past I was able to really answer each one. But now it literally would take me hours to like scroll through just for like a one day DM. But like when they email me, I do tend to get back to those emails. But it's usually if it's like. Um, like uh, any advice or blah blah but now there's also that's why on my website that I launched I created an advice column mm -hmm. so that's way easier for people to reach out to me if they need advice and I'll be able to answer them okay that. well yeah. that's a great way to do it yeah because people do feel like they know you and it's, yeah but I, has there ever been a weird experience where someone is like okay uh, you're like this is a little much for me <laughs> um well sometimes sometimes I get well you know I don't want to Say it, like it's funny to me. I don't want to. Sometimes I get some emails or DMs, and I'm just like, "What?" <laughs> like, and I'm confused. But like, I don't want to be mean about it because, no, you know, obviously I'm where I'm at because of my followers. So I don't want to act like I'm not thankful. But some of them are kind of funny. Like, um, I get like, "Hey, where do you live?" <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm like, "That's um, great." Or like, um. Um, which, what are the other ones? Oh, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm coming to LA. Can I come pick you up so we can have lunch? Where do you live? That's usually like that. And I'll be like, what? And, and that's like an email. So I don't even know what the person looks like. I don't really know their name. And I'm like, okay. Please. So <laughs> when I do at some point, uh, put you on Periscope. It's it's gonna. That's the part that's difficult. Is with Periscope, it's it's live streaming, so they're complete. They're asking you questions, and you you can't ignore it, but you yeah. can't answer all of them because there are some of them are like that. So for you, it's gonna go off the charts. Again, well, like literally, like be like, okay, uh, okay, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I've done Periscope with uh, Salcaster. I was I was um, I was doing something for Salcaster um, um, last um, Fashion Week. Okay. In New York last year, and um, and I remember Periscope. It was just like 
come after come after it's like show your tits kiss and i was like wait what what's oh, happening open bobs <laughs> is, is the big thing it's it, it's uh somebody you i don't know they use google translate or something it's instead of open boobs it's open bobs 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 it's or tits 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 it's really it's That's unfortunate so funny yeah i mean i want to get on periscope but i just like don't understand it yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm planning on getting on Facebook, and I feel like such a grandma because I can't figure out how to make it work. So that's why I'm not it. on it. But Snapchat is so, I feel like Snapchat's the funnest app out of every single I app love right Snapchat, now. I'm addicted yeah. to Snapchat. Your Snapchats are great, by the way. Oh, thank They're you. Actually, I love Snapchat. I like him. I like it. I mean, sorry, Instagram, but I am starting to like Snapchat more than I like Instagram. I am too. I, I mean, I have for a while, but I'm not a big Instagrammer anyway. Like, I'm like that once in a while girl because. For me, it's, you know. Yeah. It's not about me, though. It's about you. Anyway. <laughs> if so. Snapchat allowed allowed us to, like, upload photos, I would literally take all my memes that I create and move on to Snapchat and leave Just Instagram. take a picture of them. Yeah, but it's not the same because I take, I like, the picture on, like, the, the laptop, the computer, and then it's, like, it weird. Like, yeah. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Uh, I, I have so many questions for you. I'm a very inquisitive person, and so for you, like, I'm just like, where do I begin? I am so interested. I want to know, first and foremost... <laughs> You, you you are from you were born in Russia, correct? Yes. Okay. So you moved to LA. I and there's a whole gap. I don't have the, I don't have any of the answers between that and the move to LA. Can you just give me a little brief when you you know what point you moved from Russia and who did you move with? Did you move alone and why LA? Um, I moved with um, my mom, my dad, and my sister to the U.S. when I was 14, and it was because we won the green card lottery. You you were lucky from the start. That's I heard. That's very difficult. Like it's almost. Imp- What's the percentage yeah. of that? It's crazy. I right? have no idea. I, I know one of my friends is from Canada, and she said it's like almost impossible. Yeah, um, yeah. We got we got lucky. It was pretty amazing. The reason we moved to LA is because um, why did we move to LA? Um, I think because we have like this one far uncle that lives around here. We actually we didn't even end up like really communicating with him that much. But I think because we don't have that much family because we had this one far uncle happened to live in Los Angeles. My dad was like, oh, maybe let's move to L.A. Maybe he can tell us how, like, what was going on in, like, America, which didn't really work out. So, like, I was making jokes. I I think um, I did an interview with Galore Mag, and I was laughing about it that, like, literally when we we moved to the U.S., we were such immigrants. Like, it was, we were just so confused. It was so funny. Well, it's funny that you, if anything, you moved to L.A. Because I'm from Boston. I moved to L.A. And I felt like I moved to another country. I was like, another, I was like, what? It's yeah. just so, it's, <laughs> of all the places to first move from Russia to, like, this is like la-la land. This is, this is just, it's hard to comprehend this city. Once you get it, you're like, okay, this is awesome. But it's, it's different. It's yeah. different. Yeah. So it's it's you you move to the best place because now you really can handle any state. <laughs> this is like yeah, LA is like a different world. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like it's like there's LA is its own country, and yes. then there's the US. It's absolutely correct. <laughs> that is crazy. So and it's so interesting that you became you ended up becoming the voice for this, not just this country. I mean, so many, but it's like especially this one. Yeah. Like the, the girl that like came here at one point at 14 years old and was like, huh? And now she's like speaking for all of us. Like, that's pretty awesome. I know. I mean, I'm so lucky. I'm so fortunate. I mean, I still, um, like, honestly, I don't even, um, I don't even think about it. So when I run into fans every time, it's like a shock to me. It'd be like, wait, you know who I am? Like, you know what I do? Also because I, I don't post pictures of myself that often. Right. So I, it still throws me off because when I when I look three point two million followers, like I'm actually thinking about it, you know. Right. Yeah, that's so. interesting. Uh. It's inter- and you're so photogenic too. So I, I know you Gone. recently. Yeah, and you're so beautiful, <laughs> and your eyes twinkle in the sunlight. I, I I heard that you recently. It was about a year now that you that you came out. You you showed who you are. Almost a year. Yeah. Okay. So prior to that, was there a reason why you didn't want to do that? I just um well two reasons the first reason is because um i was in a really bad place when i first started my instagram it had nothing to do with me wanting to be famous or anything like that it just had to do with my self-esteem that was really low and i started because i just wasn't happy in my life at the moment and i was too i was just like the rest of people out there that are 
too embarrassed to talk about real problems. And I just didn't think anyone else could relate to me. So it was just to post things for me. And that's why it was anonymous because sometimes it's just so much easier to talk about things if nobody knows it's you. So your friends don't judge you and all that. So then if I want to talk about like being rejected or, or like failing in life, I can make that joke, like, but in a joking matter, like I, it'll make me feel better and then no one else can judge me for it. And when I started my Instagram, I noticed like, holy shit, like I'm not the only one, like all these other people feel the same way as me, like mind blown, you know? That's crazy. And then I continued making anonymous because I was thinking to myself, well, <laughs> I don't want to make it about me. Like I want to continue making about the followers that are following me and I don't want to take away from their experience that if they just start following me, they're going to be like, what the fuck? Like this blonde girl looks does not look like she would have my issues when in reality my whole point was like no doesn't matter what any of us look like we're all it's mainly for women like we're all women we all have the same issues i bleed once a month you bleed once mm -hmm. unless you're pregnant mm -hmm. then that no. sucks no. Oh, i guess i guess now we're older so it's like congratulations right, right. if, if it was on purpose like congratulations congrats <laughs> you know and that but the reason i eventually came out i just thought i was like more fair to my followers they kept like asking who I was and I felt like it was better to just finally put a face to my brand I think that is so fascinating that you did that and that you that you had the desire to do that because uh, correct I, I don't know about your family but I'm curious because I know you were an accountant so I'm guessing your family held education pretty high and, and getting like a decent yeah. like normal job correct oh yeah I mean my dad's a bioscience engineer oh god he's are you I mean, serious? My, my dad my dad was like um he would he was in like math competitions in Russia and he would be like number one. Are you kidding me? Yeah, my dad's very smart. My mom was a uh, like a Russian professor, so both of my parents have masters. So your dad's the antithesis of me, just so you know, because I can't <laughs> I, I have no math skills, none. Oh, Zero. I'm really good at math. I used to tutor math. That's incredible. I actually when I read that you were an accountant, I literally held you to such a higher standard because I'm like. Oh, she's so hot and she knows how to do math that exists like for me that's just so cool like it's you know, such a struggle for me but that i you know thank you but i just hate how like people not you yeah but it, it bothers me how somebody can talk shit about me because of what i do now and then they'd be like wait she has two degrees and like she, she used to be an accountant then suddenly it's like oh i put you in such a different light wait can i curse yeah if you want to cool and now <laughs> and and now and like when they say that to me i'm actually like dude fuck you like i yeah. don't I want to take away the 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 thought that people have that if you are kind of cute that you can have a brain. Right. Like you should have a brain regardless. Right. right. My dad, who was very like strong Russian, raised my sister and I this way. He basically told us. He said, um, <laughs> "This is it's, it's going to sound so terrible, but this is what he said." <laughs> oh God. He said, "Raising when myself." You, yeah. He's like, "When you grow up, your looks are going to fade." And if you get married, your husband may cheat on you and leave you. So you're gonna have you're gonna be left with nothing, including no looks. So all you're gonna all you, all you're gonna be left with is your education. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get that, you're gonna have nothing when you're older. So right though. And that's why and my sister's an attorney. So okay. So I, I did sense <laughs> that about you that you guys your whole family was very educated because if someone with a personality, I've, I've met a lot of accountants. I actually used to work in an office next to an accountant, and and he hated his life. And I'm not saying maybe some accountants love their job, but this man would just scream every day and be like, "Why am I doing this with my life?" And I'm just like, I never want to be an accountant. Not that I could be, but so uh, for you, I just it's interesting to I was trying to figure out why you chose that path first. Because you would have to make my dad happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so that answers that. Yeah. But I just want my dad to love me. <laughs> <laughs> your, but you see now, your daddy issues are, are kind of, it's interesting. Everybody has some form of a daddy issue. So yours is more like pleasing your dad, where some are like, oh, my dad was not around, or some was like. Well, I didn't grow up with my dad. Okay. Because he would travel a lot for work. So he'd be away for like three months and then back home for a month. But, um, and back then, I think when I was younger, I was resentful towards it. But, um, even on my website, daddyissuesla.com, I there's a blog that says uh, the truth behind my daddy issues, and I kind of, um, which was really hard for me to write because it's, I have to be vulnerable to, mm -hmm. to, to write about it, and and I, you know what's funny? I actually don't. I'm a very private person, so I don't oh. share anything with my friends. But then, what do you mean I, you don't share anything? What does that mean? Like the blog that I wrote, even about my my dad, my relationship with him. Most of my friends, even my best friends that I grew up with, had no idea. And why is that? You just I just like to keep things to myself. It's interesting. So it is really, and 
it's, it is really different for me. So it, like when I was coming out, I was literally shaking. I remember that day when I thought it was happening because I was just so anxious and nervous and freaked out about just the thought of like people judging me and all this stuff. And it, 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 it was like a new step for me. It took me a while to kind of, okay, it's going to be okay, you know? Yeah. And I'm still adapting to it because I am a personal, uh, very um, personal person. But I guess in, in the end, I think about me embarrassing myself versus being able, able to like help thousands of people. You know, I'd rather do this then. Like, who cares about my feelings? I love that about you because I, I was reading that you, you're, the most important thing for you is to make people feel okay. Make them feel like everything's going to be okay and that they're, make them smile. Yeah. And that's why you do this. And, and it was, I think I read it in Vanity Fair that you, sometimes you see some of your original memes because you do make a, a lot of original yeah. memes and sometimes you'll see your memes maybe the your name has been taken off of it or whatever Not maybe but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah you know and and your first initial feeling isn't what the hell you're just like okay well as long as that's getting out there and making people happy like yeah and, and giving people a smile it's it's not is that correct it doesn't enrage yeah. you as much i mean obviously i'm like it's it, sometimes i'm sometimes i create a meme and i'm like oh this this is lit this is fire i love it you know <laughs> and then like 30 minutes later to see it somewhere else without my uh, watermark of course some day some days i'm gonna be like oh this sucks mm -hmm. but i don't get upset on it or like try to fight that person because a that would make me a hypocrite because I post memes not knowing who it belongs to, and I didn't purposely take off the watermark. I just found it like that, or somebody sent it to me, you know? Yes. Because it's it's the internet, and the minute something is out there, that's it. Like it's in the internet world, and we have no control over it. So I'm not, I'm not gonna make myself sick over every single meme of mine that's stolen. Right. And B, yeah. In the end of the day, when people are going on the internet to laugh. It's very rare that I feel like they're looking like, wait, what's this watermark? Okay, like, I don't feel like they care. and <laughs> They don't. Yeah, You're and right. if I'm bitching about it or forcing every single person to take it off, I'm taking away, like, the happiness from the people that had it for, like, one second to take away from, like, their shitty job. Right. So, right. Is that how you started, though? You felt like you were in your job and you kind of, you needed a place to be more creative and, and kind of speak your mind? I mean, because accounting, I'm sure, was not... Well, a place where you were like, oh, my actually, God, I'm free. Well, no, I, I, I liked my job when oh, I was. You did like your job? I was happy when it doesn't matter what I do in life. I'm a very passionate person, so I will try to do the best I can. Like when I came into accounting, lit, like the first day, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna become a partner. I'm gonna figure out how to become a partner." That was my mindset. And even though my sister kept saying, "That's so not you. You have such a personality. I feel like you should be like in marketing or advertising or something." <laughs> and I was like, "Karen, <laughs> fuck you. You're an attorney. You you made dad happy. Like, let me do my things. So my parents can be proud." <laughs> and I thought that was my path. And, and I would literally, I remember I would go to work at like 6 a.m. and I would leave at 10 p.m. I was so into it. Unfortunately, it was the environment that ruined it for me. Oh, okay. So a lot of times you go to these big companies and these, and the problem with these big companies is that women don't have each other's back because you feel like you have more to prove versus a man. So in the end, you end up stomping on each other. And yeah. I don't agree with it. And that's why my account is all about like female friendly because of that. So my experience there in my accounting firm ended up being that the some of the women in my team were not that fond of me and it would, they would make my life like a living hell to the point that I would literally sit in my car and I'd be like, I would call my mom and be like, I don't wanna go in and I'm crying because I'm just like, what are they gonna do today to really upset me? And they were like effing over with my promotions and like bonuses and things like that. I mean, cause you, you need to get at least between 90 to 100% uh, uh, billable hours a month and they will continuously keep me between 60 to 70 percent by not giving me the specific work that I need so I could never grow yeah it was terrible and that's why I started the Instagram that's what I met when I was in the bad place that but is so I'm not bitter awful. about it no 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 I mean look at what you you yeah. can't be bitter look what you've done with that you, <laughs> see and that just and it's such an inspiration to people that maybe feel trapped at the moment or they feel like everybody's out to get them and they can't they don't know what yeah. to do it's like there's an outlet find an outlet where you can take those feelings and, and put them into that because I think that's why you became super successful. Yeah. Because you, you put your passions into it. And, and, and it goes to show, so with your meme-making skills, uh, is it 
that you either meme something you've experienced yourself or something that you just wholeheartedly feel other women would relate to? Or how do you how do you come up with a way to create this meme? And then do you find a picture of something first? Like what's your process? Um, I guess it's changed now. I think in the beginning it would be things that I felt and I think are funny. And I, then I would look for a picture to, to match it. But now because I'm so used to what I do, I think a lot of times I see a picture and I and I like I have like all these one liners, like nonstop that I keep like pitching on this picture in my head and then I pick like the best one. It's just like automatic in my brain. They're like, oh, okay, it can be this, it can be that, it can be that. Mm, okay, let's do this one. Because wow. every day, I don't know what I'm posting. So just like from, like right now, I posted some meme that I created. So it was just like before I came here. So it's off the top of my head what I think is, rela what I think is relatable to a bunch of women and men, I guess. And in that case, was it the thought first and then you went to the picture? Or no, I see a picture. Oh, wow. Okay. In the beginning, it used to be the thought and then I look for a picture and now I see a picture and then I think of a bunch of captions that go with that. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> that's like, that's your, at some point in life, I think there'll be classes in school, like meme classes, like meme 101. Like, it's so you know. crazy. It's so crazy how I feel like I, it's so weird. I don't remember memes being such a, because, because, you know, there's, there's um, like two other meme accounts that are bigger than me that have been around forever. Mm -hmm. So like, and you know, it's funny. I shouldn't admit this, but. When, cause I didn't have social media before this, and I remember. What I, do you mean you didn't have social media before? I don't have Instagram or anything like that. Before you started. Daddy issues. So you went from zero to sixty, basically. Well, like at one point I had Instagram, and then I really liked funny memes, cause I remember I would look at the fat Jewish's Instagram. Okay. And be like he's so funny. I want to post a funny meme on my Instagram. Okay. And I would post one, and I remember the engagement like didn't do as well versus I posted a selfie, and it pissed me off. Like, oh, people are so shallow. Like, I'm so sick of. Focusing on my looks because especially at work, I'm being looked down upon because of my looks. That's what right. I was half of the time. And now, like on my social media, everyone's so sh like fake and shallow. Like this is funny. So I was like, f this, and I deleted my Instagram. I didn't want to deal with the outside world. And then like six months later, I created a meme account because I much rather do that than post like selfies of me. That is so interesting. <laughs> wow, that's. That is crazy. I can't, I, I'm just picturing in my head what it went from. Like, you started with maybe, like, 100 followers or something. Is that how? Like, how Zero. fast did you? So you literally started with, when you, when you deleted your account, you don't mean you deleted just the pictures. You actually deleted yeah, your Yeah, I deleted entire, the whole account. You literally started with zero followers, and you started making memes. And how yeah. fast did you see a growth? Um, well, I started July 5th, 2014, I think. I love that you know the day that's so cool. <laughs> well, that's... I mean, yeah. That's awesome. I uh, and I guess 2014. Yeah. Wow. And I guess it start. I forgot when. I oh my god! I keep telling this is gonna be like the third time now that I bring up Joe, and I already told him two interviews I've done. I brought it up him up. So this is gonna be. So he should he should literally be paying me because this is the third interview yeah. that I'm bringing up Joe Jonas. But yeah. in 9,000 followers, he was my first celebrity follower. And I remember I was sitting in my cubicle and I texted my best friend Kylie. I'm like, holy shit, Kylie, this is happening. This is it. And we're obviously sarcastic because yeah. we didn't think anything. I was like, bitch, I'm famous. I'm quitting my job. <laughs> like, Joe Jonas just followed me. I think we're dating. Like, this is it. I was like so excited about this it. Is amazing. And then I forgot when that happened. But I think that's when I was just like, I can't believe a celebrity would follow me. And then it kept growing. I think maybe celebrities tagging each other, and plus me having posting relatable things. And also, I think when I started it, there weren't other female type of accounts like mine that's like female driven, like a female voice. The captions always focus on making their own like funny parts. And I think it wasn't happening then. Back now, there's a lot of copycats. Right. But back then, it wasn't like that. And I think because I started something different, I think maybe that's how people were drawn to my account. Right. And January is when MTV wrote about me, and that's when I was yes. just like, holy shit. Yeah, it was just another, it was just another yeah. level. You couldn't even comprehend. What did your parents think? Like, um, at what point did you actually tell them? Because I know, like, with me, like, I don't tell them every single thing. So, like, what was the point? I'm sure you didn't call them the day you made the Instagram, right? Like, you just kind of... Well, like, sometimes I would get excited about it, and I couldn't really talk about it with anyone because it was anonymous. And so I would... 
make comments here and there to my sister or to my mom and be like, Mom, look, I'm at 20,000 followers on Instagram. This is so cool. And she'll be like, okay, что? Mm. <laughs> like, what? Mm. Like, you know, because she, she, like, doesn't understand it, you know? <laughs> and then, and then like, my sister kind of made jokes. They were like, dude, focus on your CPA exams. Right. And I was just like, no, I really feel like this is something. And then it just kept on growing and growing. And suddenly, you know, by, by the time MTV wrote about me, January, January 5th, 2015, I was at around like 300,000 followers. So I think then they were kind of like, oh, okay, this is weird. Why are people following you? What's so interesting about it? Five is kind of your lucky number, it seems, huh? Shit, you're right. I should remember that. Yeah, five. <laughs> five's a good number for you. Yeah. How did you find time while you were still at your job to make these memes? And were you posting as many as you are now? I was posting more. Because when you start, you want to get the attention. So I was posting more, and um, I would basically be working all day, and then at night, like, I would barely sleep because I would just be, like, looking around for, like, funny memes, creating my own memes, like, stuff like that. And then I, like, math is everything for me. So I was literally, like, I was calculating, like, based on my followers, how many comments and likes do I want per post, and, like, so it was like a little a science like, project was, kind of yeah so and i was so obsessed with this i literally had no time for friends because I, I was just doing the both of the stuff and then towards the end of work i totally gave up on work i remember which is <laughs> fucked up but i was just like i would literally just be in my cubicle doing my memes waiting for to get fired because <laughs> i didn't have the balls to quit so, so just, what what did happen did i had quit? to quit oh, because did. i don't know if anyone that works at big companies unless you're just like a terrible person usually it takes a long time to quit to get fired you have to go yeah. through all these programs all that so i was just like I'm, i gave up and i finally took a leap of faith and i quit and my dad didn't know until like two three months later oh wow and i was nervous to tell How him did you find out i told him oh. and then he was just like really calm about it he was like okay well as long as you're happy i was like wow okay like i can't believe you finally believe it. that's amazing <laughs> oh does and did he know the name of it and did you have to explain what that yeah. was mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting yeah, he's okay with it now. Okay. He was really confused at first. <laughs> oh my. So what is your um what is your favorite? Do you have an Instagram that you like to follow? Fuck, I would get Snapchat asked that. or something. Well, it's okay if you don't. I like I like Kylie Jenner. Okay. I like her because unlike other people that I make comments like, "Oh, I like her cuz I want to make fun of her." I like Kylie Jenner because She's so young and in the public eye, and it's really interesting for me to watch her snap sometimes or, like, to look at her Instagram because it's interesting for me to see how somebody that young, how they handle such fame and how they handle all the negativity that comes their way because mm -hmm. people don't get it, but, like, she's a human being, and she has to be very strong to put up with that. So I'm fascinated to know what she's up to, and, like, I like watching, like, millennial girls and, like, what they're up to, like Gigi Hadid, Kylie Jenner, yeah, Bella Hadid, like... I don't look at them and judge them. I'm, they're just fascinating to me. No, I love the... I, I'm a... Any, ask anybody. I love the Kardashians. I think they're geniuses. Well, I just think they're amazing. let's be real. Everyone <laughs> loves the Kardashians. And they won't admit it, though. That's what's funny. But, like, if you go and look at plastic surgery stuff or, like, there's this one guy that re can, um, like, recreate your face or something. So Dr. Like, Orion? No, no. Like, oh. he, like I'm talking even online. Like, oh. he does it at Photoshop oh. or something. <laughs> Every time, they're like, can I look like Kylie Jenner? And it's like... Bitch, were you not just like commenting, making fun of her, like her lips or something? But then you say you want to oh, look no, like they her. Oh like... no, they all look incredible, and they yeah, are, they have the best of everything, and they 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 take good care of themselves, and they're please like it, it, that's the one thing that does aggravate me as well. It's trolls. You know? People are just so mean online they're now. So mean. I even get that meanness sometimes, and I'm just like, do you guys forget that? I mean, I feel like people on the internet forgot that whoever they're. I feel like the minute you have a certain amount of followers, they forget that you're a real person, and then they'll just be like, ah, she's so annoying, and it's like, what? I, I just read that. <laughs> well, that's that's actually similar to Periscope. They'll they'll say, who is she? And I'll be on, I'm like, hi, it's, I'm, I can read this. It's she is me. I hi, you can ask. So, but Instagram's a little different. I, I, don't, I don't know how you, you and people that are that followed, you have to figure out a way to, like, just ignore the hate. But it's not easy. But once you do it, I think you... You can nail it, you know, it just takes yeah. a little while. Yeah. Can't really care. I ignore it for the most part. Yeah. Usually if somebody's rude, I just block them. I don't even respond, I'll block right. them. Oh, do you? Okay. And then 99% of the time, they'll email me or their friend will DM me saying, hey, they're so sorry, can you block them? And I'd be like, well, can your friend admit that she was being a cunt? 
<laughs> tell her to admit it, and then they'll admit it, and I'd be like, okay, okay, I won't block you. Sometimes I do that for fun. That's amazing. <laughs> you are a very forgiving person. Well, yeah, I mean, I am. I'm a, I'm a good person. <laughs> I can't take it. Oh, my God. Um, so what, in, what inspires you? Like in life? In life. What inspires you? Inspires me to like It inspires do... you to, it doesn't have to be even just for your memes, just inspires you. And like what, what gets you, it could be music, it could be like, what's something that just makes you so genuinely happy and excited? Okay, let's see. So one thing that inspires me, obviously music. I get really inspired because I can listen, if I listen to like a beat music, suddenly I'm like moving around. That really inspires me. But also what inspires me is um real people. So I like I like watching like on TV something a story that happened to somebody and how they overcame something that really inspires me I completely cry from it or what, what inspires me I think the most is when I get emails from followers if I'm having a bad day and suddenly and I feel completely like I suck today or useless or whatever and, and then I get an email about how thankful somebody is and from following me and how they overcame their own issues they overcame like feeling different because I I talk about feeling different and like I think that really inspires me I'm like oh my god okay so I don't suck like okay let me keep doing what I'm doing that's the wow. most I guess that's that's yeah. beautiful though that you you don't sometimes you know, I don't think you can you realize how many people yeah you help through things you laughing to me is the best therapy in the world and if you can like it takes a lot for me to laugh because I I'm I love Lucy. Lucille Ball is like my life. Like she's like the queen of comedy, the funniest person. So for me, like it's hard for me to find something really genuinely funny where I laugh from the gut. And your oh. memes make me laugh from oh. the gut. I was so waiting for. I was like, where's yeah. this going? I'm tying it in. I'm tying it in. <laughs> it's funny. The one time I talk slightly slowly, and it's like, and like I feel uh, like, oh wait, I have to get my word out. Uh, but that's so. It's 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 really you don't realize what you do. I think sometimes how many people you help and that you make their days a little brighter. Yeah, I mean, th yeah, that's amazing. I never want to think that I'm, like, helping and I'm this amazing person, you know, because I think it takes away from being modest and also, yeah, you don't want to think, I, I never want to put myself, make myself feel like I'm something special, you know, because a lot of times oh, people will also try to put you down, like, oh, you, oh, you just create memes. It's like, well, go fuck yourself. Why don't you create some memes and right. see who follows you? Right. 100%. Who, who, yeah. Sometimes I so. get to that boiling point. Sometimes you get to that, though. You're just like, come on. Like, I yeah. can't, you can't do anything right sometimes with these people. They're just waiting. I, don't, I wonder what they do someday. I wonder, I wonder, like, do they just sit and wait for you to do something? Like, they're just so angry. I want to, and then you meet them, and they're, like, usually like very it. cowardly. Like, they will never say it to your face. That's the no. funny part. Here, here's a funny one. Uh, so, like, I also have a, a personal Instagram called Viola Benson. Mm -hmm. And on that one, what I do is I create um, funny videos. Like, I think right. of an idea, and I film it with my friends. I edit it, and I post it on Instagram. And so I made a joke about the Victoria's Secret show, how, like, watching it, you're just, like, stuffing your face, and then you end up crying because... Anybody, any woman, doesn't matter how beautiful you are, watching Victoria's Secret show in December, you want to kill yourself. You want to kill yourself, yeah. Because they're just so perfect. It's hard. So I made a funny thing about it, and some girl I remember commented saying, like, oh, my God, like, why is everyone laughing? Like, this girl tries to be, she keeps trying to be related. This this girl, like, um, she literally looks like a, she's just as skinny as as pretty as a Victoria's Secret model. She keeps trying to be relatable, but she's not. Like, oh, my God, let's just give up already. And I responded back saying, Oh my God, I just got my period and I'm having the worst day ever. Thank you so much <laughs> for saying I look like a Victoria's Secret model. I really needed that. And she's like, Oh my God, of course, I love you so much. That's what I'm here for, blah, blah. And I was just like, Did she buy bar? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, sometimes you can try to. Yeah, that's really funny. You could. Yeah. They, they, all of a sudden, they went from thinking they were giving you like a, like a really mean comment, then you like instill like, oh wait, that was nice, oh, and then they turn completely. Yeah. To, like, that's, like, why would I be offended that you just said it? That's like, hilarious. Oh my god, I can't. Uh, so, what are you current? Uh, I mean, you're working on your memes, obviously, but what are you currently working on aside from that? Is there anything that? Um, you are doing with your brand because you just launched this website which is yes, beautiful by the way and i love the you. pictures 33 marketing it was my website designer he's the best like we were working on it back and forth exactly what i want yeah i love my website so i blog on it around like twice or three times a week so that's pretty time consuming wow. especially okay. if i blog about game of thrones that takes me like hours i saw this you're a big game of thrones fan huge okay okay yeah cool. my I boyfriend is like he lives for it and so it's funny i don't like it so what? yeah i'm sorry i have to go <laughs> i 
<laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. I, but I also fairly never really gave it a chance. So, yeah, you but should. I, yeah, so I'm so, sorry, but I love but, that you love that show. I love it. Yeah, and then some some followers would be like, "You look, you look like somebody who just started watching from season three. And I'm like, "What does that even mean?" <laughs> or like, "Stop pretending like you like Game of Thrones or something." Blah blah. And it's like, I'm like, again, I know it has to do with my looks. That makes no fucking sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, so TV annoying. TV fans are, are hard to, I mean, No, but I am, difficult. The, the funny thing is, half of those TV fans, I'm way more obsessed than they are because I write about it and each blog for Game of Thrones takes me five to six hours to write. Wow. Because I do so much research and I'll rewatch the show twice and I look for like different clues to figure things out. So what's your Sunday night look like? Are you alone? Do you want anybody to like, you, you want to oh, be alone, alone and focus? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, and then... Yeah. I'm, and, like, I watch it at 6 p.m. or 7, let's say, till 8. And then from 8 to, like, 2 a.m., I'm just, like, on my laptop. Or, like, even when I'm watching it, I start already writing, like, different things, like, moments that I want to talk about. And then I have to, like, rewrite the whole thing and also, like, add funny things, look for pictures or, like, gifs or whatever it's do, called. Do you know we have, here at After Buzz, we have, like, the biggest Game of Thrones after show, like, the diehard fans that they come here and they host a show every week doing a recap I think I of should it. be on it. Um, I absolutely <laughs> have to talk to them, like, see if you want to come in one time. Like, that'd be amazing. But, like, that's, if you ever, for really diehard fans, it's cool to be able to tune into an after show where people who genuinely love the show yeah. are well, discussing the episode. Well, that's why I write episode. about it. Because yeah. I feel like I can never talk about we it with anyone. We recap TV shows here. Yeah, yeah, I can never talk about the theories I'm thinking about and the reasons I think about these theories because no one else is that as obsessed. They're like, what's that person's name again? <laughs> and you're like, fuck, oh, Jon Snow, idiot. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know? So, I, yeah, I mean, that would be great. That's why I blog about it, and I blog also about funny things. Like, I just wrote, a hundred, like, a hundred things all girls lie about. Oh, wow. So, it's, it's really funny things like that. And then, aside from that, there's an emoji app that's coming out in a few days. What? It's gonna, I'm pretty sure, it just passed, so it's called, uh, so I can talk about it now. It's called um, Emoji as Fuck, like, Emoji AF. And we're still putting on hold until maybe, like, Thursday or next week. Okay. And it's literally, like, the Daddy Issues Instagram into memes. So it's, like, really funny things. And, like, they're awesome that you can send your girlfriends. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's not, like, an emoji just of me and I'm just, like, (laughs) and then, like, you have to send it. It's more, like, it can be, like, it's girls, different races. Right. I made sure to include that because I don't think everyone's a blonde with green eyes or blue eyes. So, although there are some of me, but there's also different girls that could be, like, BFFs or, like, really hungover, like, throwing up in the bathroom. Perfect. Like, stuff like that. So, if you're saying, like, you can sound like I'm really hungover and stuff like, or, like, about, like, so did you get the D? And it's, a gr- like, me going like this. It's, <laughs> <laughs> like, so funny. That's great. I know. I have to show it to you. I, I can't wait to see it. That's amazing. Yeah. I will be. I'll, I'll will show be it to you. Right. I'll okay. show it to you after this. Okay. You'll love it. So my last question for you is, do you, it's a hard question. Okay. Do you have a favorite meme that you've ever made? Um, or a most memorable one? Or just something that just like when you think of your memes, you're like, oh, that, that meme. That one I made. I guess one of my favorite ones is, let's see if it's, oh, I hate the new Instagram update. Do you not like the hot pink? I feel like it gives me, it gives me like a headache. Yeah, one of my favorite ones, although there's so many. It's usually, this is really sick, but my favorite memes are usually when they involve, like, little kids making <laughs> face expressions, and then I write something completely, like, perverted about it, which some people get so mad. They're like, why would you do that? It's just a child. Oh. But they, it cracks me up. Um, where is it? It's, like, one of my... Well, I could tell you what my favorite one of yours is while you're what? looking for yours. One, I, well, I have, like, a couple of them, but one of them is the cat with the banana. There's like a cat with a banana on your website. On your oh my god, I like, forgot. That is one of that's my favorite. That's like one of the favorite. Like, like I love it. Oh my god, I can't. And, and then, like, I, I I had to like re-edit the whole video, and oh. then also added like the music to it, and then the, the caption. Like I literally can't stop looking at it. Um, and then Thanks the other one me. is the um the pubic hair one, which where she glues the pubic oh. hair back on. That one's hilarious. Okay, so okay, so I have three then. Okay. The monkey one, okay. and then this one when you run into your BFF's ex in public. Oh, okay, this one's great. When and you it, run into your, so for anybody that can't see, it's it's um, a truck, a little boy, like, and somebody else in a truck, a little kid yeah, in a truck. Yeah, and, like, the music is. <laughs> so then, like, it's added this music to it, that's and it amazing. kills me. It's a little kid chasing another little kid. And then this is my second favorite, is this one. My face when meeting my boyfriend's new bae, like, hi, I know everything about you. I'm the author of your text. I've seen your dick pics. We dating, too. <laughs> that's great. 
right? That's and this a, is a kid. That's amazing. Guy. I know. Yeah, those this, are great. So I guess those three are my favorite, but there's so many. There's sometimes. so many. I could, I really is hard for me yeah, to Yeah, sometimes talk. I make something and I'm like, eh, whatever. Sometimes yeah. I make it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so funny. I just have to keep looking at it like a million times because yeah. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. Making yourself laugh is probably the best feeling. Yeah. Wait, so yeah, I'm doing my website. Then the emoji app is coming out in a few days. Emoji as fuck. That's going to be exciting. And then what else am I doing? Oh, I'm doing some TV stuff that I can't talk about. Okay, that's all right. We I think we, that's all. Well, that's yeah. all. That's all. That's it. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I am so happy to that I got to meet you and got to dig into your meme life, the meme queen life, the life of your meme. What is it called? Meme, meme queen. What do we say? Queen, the queen of memes. Meme queen. The the life of the meme no. queen. No, is a meme queen. Was a queen. Oh, whatever. Whatever. The life of I think we said meme queen. We'll have to ha- we'll have to make that go trending. I know. <laughs> the meme queen is it? Let's see. She's gonna really look it up. And um, where can everybody follow you on everything in case they didn't know at this point? Well, um, there's my meme Instagram, which is Daddy Issues underscore. Then there's my personal one, which is Violet Benson, where I post like funny videos I make. But the Benson the the O is a zero. Okay. And then there's Twitter. If I don't know if people still use Twitter. Yeah, I guess Twitter. they do because Periscope, right? Yeah, um, it's Daddy Issues with two underscores. Although I'm trying to f- get a change that name. Mm-hmm. Then there's Snapchat, which is my fave. So you guys should follow me on that. It's exactly. um, Daddy Issues LA, and then my website is DaddyIssuesLA.com. And is that it? I, don't I know. think that's it. Yeah, that's it. And your emoji, you'll you'll be tweeting about that and talking about that when yeah people can and i'll, and I'll and post it on instagram yeah. too when people can download i'm so yeah. i'm like we've been working on it for months like i really? came up with all the ideas and then the engineer has to create it for me and then comes back to me and i'm like no no, no it, like fix this fix that because i'm really like into hands-on to everything that i do that's, so it shows oh thank you you're welcome so that's why i'm just like so excited for it to come out well yeah. i'm excited we're gonna figure out whether it was meme, meme queen the meme queen okay it was cool to dig into the life of the meme queen meme that's what queen. i was trying to say yeah and um you can find me on twitter at ashley daniels and instagram is miss ashley daniels and until next time see ya bye bye <laughs> And we're going to From say- executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, see you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 